Hello and welcome to Reach Online. We are one church in many places and it's great for you to join us from Belper, Derby, Leicester, Nottingham and further afield. My name is Esther, this is my husband George and we're leading in Leicester. So today we're going to have some worship together and after that we're going to hear a devotion from Adam Martin in Derby. Then our family from Leicester and Nottingham will be breaking off into their communities whilst everyone else joining us is going to hear from Helen and Ben, who are talking to other leaders in Derby about community life. In a scheduling error, uh, I'm both down to lead the meeting with Esther this morning and lead the worship, so I'm about to introduce myself, so I apologise for that. But before we go into a time of worship, I just wanted to read a couple of verses from the Psalms to prepare our hearts this morning and then pray for us. So from Psalm 33, verse four and five, it says, For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. Let's pray together. Lord, we just thank you that we can come together online this morning, that we can uh, worship you from our homes. And we just thank you that you are in every atom of creation, Lord, that you made everything. And we just pray this morning for more of your righteousness and your justice for this earth. Pray that you transform our hearts and renew our minds to be more like you as we come into your presence and declare you King of Kings and Lord of Lords this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Changing hearts and minds 
His great love for us. We will praise Him with our lives and proclaim our love for Him. Oh, He has paid the highest price. His great love for us, oh, we will praise Him with our lives and proclaim our love for Him, and proclaim, and proclaim our love. Is faithful. Oh, he is faithful. He is glorious and he is Jesus. And all my hope is in him. He is freedom. He is healing right now. He is love, hope, joy, and peace and life. Never gonna let me down 
My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Here in your love, here in your love. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. We are 
Father God, we thank you for this time um, that we've just had uh, worshipping you through song and praise and we want to continue um, in this position of worship, Father. Um, we want to come before you. Are, we are waiting here for you and we're ready for you. So I pray would you prepare our hearts, um, make them ready for, um, for your word and for your spirit to land in them and... Uh, um, yeah, just to, to come alive in us. Amen. 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 Yeah, we've got a few notices for you and just a little bit of a reminder of some key information now. So the first thing to say is that we want to care for you pastorally in the church. So if you have anything to get in touch with us about or you'd like to talk to us about anything, please do contact us at hello at reachonline.org. We'd love to hear from you. We'd also like to say a huge thank you to everyone who's been able to give during this time. It's really appreciated every gift, large or small. We know just how difficult the circumstances are for many, many people. Um, if you would like to give, the information is available to you right here. Um, it's our website reachonline.org forward slash giving where you'll be able to find out about giving a one-off gift or a regular amount. And now we're going to hand over to Holly, who is going to share with us what the children will be up to this week. Hey Reach Kids, I'm just popping in to say hi and to let you know that two new videos have just gone live over on the Reach Online YouTube page. Louise has done an amazing video about the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000 and my video this week links in with the little church boxes and we'll be discussing the fruits of the spirit. So go check them out and let us know what you think. On a side note with the little church boxes, I've had loads of questions come in about how much they cost and who they're for, so I thought I would just let you know they are totally free. If you'd like one, you can sign up through the Church Suite app or you can drop me an email at holly at reachonline.org. If you're not on Church Suite, then please email us at hello at reachonline.org and we can help you to get set up. In terms of age ranges for the boxes, I am currently unable to do multiple boxes for different ages. It's just me on my own in the office piecing together the boxes and we've got about a hundred that go out every week so it's just a little bit past my capacity. However, I have made it that whatever age you are there will be something in the box that you are able to do. But if you get a box and you find that you're not able to do what's in there then please email me and I will make sure that in future weeks they're a little bit more age appropriate. One of the things that I love about church is that it's family together. There's a whole range of different people of different ages all gathered together to worship Jesus. And I've been hearing from our adults all the time that they're really missing your faces. They miss seeing you dance and play with ribbons and musical instruments during our worship. They miss seeing you run out of your Sunday groups with your craft. And so I've been asked if there are any videos that we can share on a Sunday right here on this big channel. Your parents will be getting a little email from me asking if there's anything that you'd like to to show so if there is then please ask them to send me that email and we will get you on the big screen and you can wave at yourself on a Sunday. We want to see videos of you dancing, of you crafting, of you baking, we want to see what you've been getting up to whilst we've been on lockdown in our homes. So send those videos in on my email address holly at reachonline.org and you might just see your face. I think that is everything that I need to let you know this week so I will see you again next Sunday and in the meantime I'll see you in our kids videos over on the Reach Online YouTube page. Bye! Thank you Holly, once again that sounds really exciting and I'm sure many families will be enjoying those resources this week. We are now going to hear from Adam Martin who is part of the leadership team in Reach Derby and he's going to share some thoughts on Romans with us. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'd like to share some verses from the Bible that I hope will encourage and inspire you. I'm going to be reading from Romans chapter 11, verse 33, from the New Living Translation. 
Oh, what a wonderful God we have! How great are his riches and wisdom and knowledge! How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and methods! For who can know what the Lord is thinking? Who knows enough to be his counsellor? And who could ever give him so much that he would have to pay it back? For everything comes from him, everything exists by his power, and is intended for his glory. To him be glory for evermore. Amen. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will accept. When you think of what he has done for you, is this too much to ask? Don't copy the behaviour and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know what God wants you to do, and you will know how good and pleasing and perfect his will really is. As God's messenger, I give each of you this warning. Be honest in your estimate of yourselves, measuring your value by how much faith God has given you. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are all parts of his one body, and each of us has different work to do. And since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other, and each of us needs all the others. God has given each of us the ability to do certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out when you have faith that God is speaking through you. If your gift is that of serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, do a good job of teaching. If your gift is to encourage others, do it. If you have money, share it generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Don't just pretend that you love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, stand on the side of good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honouring each other. Never be lazy in your work, but serve the Lord enthusiastically. Be, be glad for all God is planning for you. Be patient in trouble and always be prayerful. And then the passage goes on into those wonderful verses that Michael spoke from so powerfully last week, all about offering hospitality and including the stranger. These verses are really practical, but Paul grounds them in that glorious sort of hymn of praise at the end of chapter 11. I think it's quite ironic that after spending 11 chapters outlining for us the message of the gospel, how God has saved us from our complete lostness and hopeless situation through the gift of his son and how through faith and repentance we, are, we become children of God. He then goes on to say how impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his methods. It is in some ways beyond us and yet God gives us the ability to understand enough to be able to come into relationship with him and live for him. And it's on the basis of his kindness and generosity that Paul appeals to us and to the church in Rome particularly to live our lives as a living sacrifice. Now, this would have been a strange idea to the church in the day, to the people of Rome and the, the Jewish Christians there, just as it seems a strange idea to us. But what Paul is saying is that our offering is not something that we take up to the temple, a gift that we present at the altar. But it's our very selves, our embodied lives lived out Monday through to Sunday in the practical way that we relate to people and go about our work to offer that as worship to God. And he warns us not to copy the behaviour and customs of the world around us that's squeezing us into its mould, but instead to be transformed through our renewed minds. That's the work of the Holy Spirit and the word, the word of God together, shaping us and making us in tune with the values of the kingdom of God rather than the empire of this world. Paul then warns us not to evaluate ourselves in a worldly way, 
And there's all sorts of ways in which we might evaluate ourselves by comparing ourselves to others and how much success that we've had. Of course, our value comes ultimately from the fact that we are loved by God. We're chosen, adopted into his family. But if we want to evaluate how we're doing in our Christian life, Paul says, look at how you're using your gift, the faith that God's given to you and how you're putting it into practice. And he does get really practical here. He talks about how we've all been given a different work to do and we all need one another. It may be that at the moment you're thinking, how can I use my gifts when we're not even meeting together physically as a church? But, you know, there are so many ways that we can still be a blessing to one another in the body of Christ. We're going to be hearing some stories about that later on, about the life that's going on in our community groups. But let's just have a look at these verses again. If you have the ability to prophesy, speak out what God has given you. You can still bring a word of prophetic encouragement to someone by giving them a phone call, sending them a message. You can serve one another. If you're a teacher, you can share a word of encouragement or inst instruction with your community group. If you're an encourager, well, we really need encouragement at the moment. Get on and encourage people. If you're a giver, give generously. And there's so many ways in which you can do that with so many needs around us. We still need leadership and we definitely need those who have a gift for showing kindness to others. Can I encourage you? Use your gift. Allow the Holy Spirit to anoint it, to guide and direct you as you use your gift. And it will have a powerful effect. We need one another at this time. And Paul appeals to us to make our love real and genuine. But just to finish with, in verse 12, I love this encouragement to be glad for all that God is planning for us, to be encouraged by the hope that we have for the future, to be patient in trouble. We need patience at the moment as this virus just seems to keep going on and on and circulating around. And always be prayerful. No, we need to be praying for one another, but let's also be praying for our nation. Let's pray that this increasing neighbourly kindness that we're seeing would remain. Let's pray that families that have spent so much more time together would love each other more closely and consistently. And Paul appeals to us to be faithful in prayer. Let's continue to use as much time as we can set aside to seek him, to go deeper in our relationship with him and to bring needs to him, knowing that he loves to hear and respond. Thank you, Adam. That was really thought provoking and hopefully helpful for many of you out there in the current situation. We're now at the point where we're going to say goodbye to our Leicester and Nottingham family who are going to go off into their community groups online as per the instruction sent from your local leadership team. And those of you who are staying on, you're about to hear a discussion led by Ben Rook and Helen Byrne with other community leaders about community life in Derby. Well, it's great to be together again this morning and I'm delighted that we're going to talk in a bit more depth today about REACH community. So I'm delighted to have Helen Byrne with me again, who leads our REACH communities in Derby, leads the team. And my name is Ben Rook. So I'm going to kick us off by asking Helen just to recap just briefly what she shared with us a couple of weeks ago, because Helen brought a fantastic message to us about communities just a few weeks ago. And by the way, if you want to revisit that message, you can visit it on our YouTube channel. So Helen, why don't you just recap for us what you brought to us just a few weeks back? Thanks, Ben. Uh, sure. So. Two weeks ago, uh, I spoke really about a cultural awakening that's happening because of the COVID-19 crisis and how as Christians, there's an opportunity for us to wake up to a new picture of how God invites us and calls us to be his family together. And there were three particular things that I felt God prompting me uh, to talk about in relation to being the family of God. So first, that was about connecting looking at the way uh, the early church connected together in their daily lives and um, not just for a meeting once a week but 
learning, growing and, and living life out with one another. Secondly, was the need for us to be open and how being a family is about being honest and vulnerable with one another, uh, that we can talk about how we really are and what's going on in our lives. And family being a place where it's okay not to be okay, uh, a place where we can be truly loved and grow more into who God's called us to be because of this openness with each other. And finally, uh, I talked about the importance of sharing together so families share their resources and this is a time where uh, we really need to learn more of what it means to be the hands and feet of Jesus, uh, looking to meet one another's needs and share what we have as a family with the world around us. Absolutely. That's really helpful, Helen. Thanks for recapping that. And of course, what we really want to be just emphasizing at the moment is that reach communities our communities are the primary building block that we have as a church you know we've got so used to over many years to having sunday gatherings which are just a fantastic time to come together and then communities as well but actually the truth is you, you can't belong to a meeting on a sunday morning and you, you certainly the in these days that we're facing you can't find belonging to a sunday broadcast can you um Belonging is found in relationship with one another. And so, so communities are our primary building block. And so we really want to go on a journey where we're learning what it is to go into a deeper sense of discipleship in community with one another. When we, when we step into faith, we're stepping into a relationship with Jesus, but we're also being invited into a family and into a family on a journey together. And that's really what our community is about. So we're just excited that God's giving us an opportunity to develop these communities at the moment and to have to push even more into what it means to be on a journey together, right? Yeah, there's definitely an invitation for us to uh, grow, uh, which is what following Jesus is all about, really, isn't it? Um, we often use this word discipleship, um, and that's not just something that happens on a Sunday morning, um, tuning into a meeting. It's also not something that just happens on a training program or by reading a book. Following Jesus is about being one of his disciples. And I love this quote from Dallas Willard um, where he says, discipleship is the process of becoming who Jesus would be if he were you. And I believe that for us to fully learn and grow to be more like Jesus, we need to do that um, in the context of a family of believers encouraging one another together. So what does Jesus do? What does being Jesus really look like in our lives? Well, and um, thankfully, he gives us an, a brilliant pattern for uh, what that looks like. You can see it particularly um, in Luke 6, where we see this pattern of Jesus spending time with um, his three key relationships, basically. So he spends time up the mountain uh, with the Father in prayer, connecting with him. He then comes down the mountain uh, and spends time with his disciples, with that community of believers who he was uh, growing and being family together with. And then he also spends time um, going out from that place, reaching out to the lost, reaching out to the crowds and the people around him uh, who were a lost and broken world who he knew he was called to. So we sometimes talk about that um, as being the up, the in and the out relationships that Jesus had. And I think that that's an incredible pattern um, for us to look at in our own lives and, and is one that we um, look at as reach communities um, is the way that we can pattern all that we do together. Absolutely. So this up in and out thing isn't just some kind of religious jargon that we're using. It's actually a way of remembering and thinking very simply about the pattern of Jesus' life with the Father, with the family of God, the disciples, and with our lost and broken world. And so what we want to do today, I guess, Helen, is just hear from a few of our different rich communities and the leaders of them and just see what they've been doing to push into those different spaces. Um, so that's what we're going to do in a few minutes. And today isn't about a three-line whip to being in a community or anything like that. It's an invitation again and an opportunity to say, you know what, I want to live my life in community with others because I really want to know what it is to push into this discipleship thing and a life patterned on Jesus. And I want to do more than just engage with a broadcast or even a meeting. So there's, a, there's an invitation out of this. And hopefully for the existing communities, there'll be some fresh ideas, some new thinking and some encouragement about some great things that's, that are happening around the patch at the moment. So I'm excited to hear what our community leaders have got to say. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mentioned uh, a couple of weeks ago when I spoke a few of the things that our communities have been getting up to, um, but we thought it'd be great for you to get to hear from some of them uh, yourselves. So we're going to look at um, the different ways that our REACH communities are doing the up, the in and the out at the moment. Um, and so we're going to start with up and hear uh, from a few of them uh, some stories about how they're uh, connecting with the father together during this time. Hi, I'm Rondell. And I'm Katie. And we lead the Reach Derby student community. During this time, we've been meeting online, doing things like Bible studies, quizzes, and just hanging out. But we really wanted to try something different to worship God and seek Jesus in a new way. So we wrote a psalm together. Yeah. Um, the psalms are a collection of prayers, songs, and poems. And a lot of them are written out in quite specific situations. Um, so we wanted to take our situation now in, in the mm -hmm. pandemic, in the lockdown, and try and write something out of quite an honest place um, and just give it a go. Yeah, so we started the evening by each reading our favourite psalms and some of the more well-known ones um, and then we spent some time praying and asking God to speak to us in that moment. What did he want us to hear from him and what did he want the psalm to say? Um, what did we want people to get if they picked it up? And we decided that was really encouragement. Yeah, um, and then the hard bit started. We tried to... Uh, <laughs> throwing lines, we were taking quotes from other Psalms, um, writing from um, our own feelings and thoughts mm. and just trying to string sentences together, um, which was quite tough. We were starting to lose track a little bit, but the best part was kind of asking each other the, the right questions. So what is God saying to you right now in this moment? Um, importantly, what do you want to say to God? And also what are your feelings right now? How are you feeling about the lockdown situation? How are your friends feeling? Um, and questions like that really and yeah it really encouraged us to be um, a bit more vulnerable a bit more open mm. and it was pushing each other to dig a little deeper um, and asking people to think through things and, and really express what they're feeling at the moment um, this was all really tough and new and different for a lot of us and it was awkward over zoom um, but we started off the conversation by just saying look it's it is going to be awkward um, we are trying something new so let's just give it a go together. And I think that's the best part of community. Um, we get to experiment with things, um, tr try things out together and have fun doing it. And basically all in the name of getting to know God more. Um, so yeah, it's good fun. Yeah. After about an hour and a half, we realized we were still throwing lines in. We did this mostly over the chat box to make it a bit easier. Um, and then yeah, at the end, one of our students uh, volunteered to pull it all together for us, and we would love to share that with you. Love the Lord, for he has always loved you, for he always provides and his love remains constant. We sing of his praises and ask upon him for guidance. Lord, help us to love others as you love us. Teach us to be a beacon to those who cannot be reached in times of trouble. When the world is crying out, May we always turn to you. Let our lives be reflections of the lighthouse you have created, designed to guide the lost and hopeless souls in a search of a father. For your heart is not for us to suffer, even in times of isolation, you are our joy. With the voices you have gifted us with, we will sing your name. Let every person know the good news of the Messiah. Let no one come before you in our praise, for authority is in your name. Lord, crumble the walls that attempt to blind us. Remind us of who we are. When the world tells us lies that we are alone, remind us that you are always there. Blessed are we that because of you, we are more than conquerors. Enemies bow down to you and submit to you. Blessed are we to have such a loving father who loves us even with our imperfections. Blessed are we indeed, children of God. Hi, my name is Graham Ferguson. I lead the REACH community called The Bridge. As a community, we regularly pray for each other and for other people. Uh, we've seen some remarkable answers to prayer over the last two or three weeks. Uh, we prayed for one person in the group who was having a really difficult time with her boss um, at work and there was a tricky meeting coming up. So we prayed that things would get resolved uh, and doors would open for her. Uh, she came back the next time we met and said that the boss had unexpectedly said that he was moving on. And so that was a real answer to prayer. Uh, we had another situation where one of the members of the group was involved in a chess club and 
the chess club had been told that one of the members of the group was seriously ill in hospital with COVID-19 um, and had been on a ventilator for a fortnight. So we, we prayed and, were, um, and then were told uh, a fortnight later that the doctors had said that this man had made a miraculous recovery and was now at home recovering. Uh, and then we also pray for people in the group who have hospital appointments and we pray for their safety and for the safety of the people in the group who worked in the NHS facilities. So life does go, go on and life's concerns still happen uh, and we look to support people through prayer in those ways. Hi there, my name's Sam Thorogood and I'm really privileged to, to co-lead Acts 4 with Eve, Helen, Mike and Naomi. I think one of the dangers of Zoom is that it can become quite a one note sort of tool and every week can follow a very similar format. So we've, we, I think we've tried as a community to, to think creatively about how we can use Zoom. Um, Eden led us in a quiz night a few weeks ago, which was great. And, um, and something else that, that we did that worked really well, and you know, I'd encourage communities to, to do as well, is, 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 is worship um, as a community over Zoom. Um, the way that we did that was, was Mike you know, led us brilliantly, as, as always, um, through Zoom with his guitar. And we were all muted, so we didn't kind of hear each other singing at different times. Um, and, and, and then Eve led us in a time of um, responding to what God was, was saying to us prophetically. And um, we created out of that evening lots of artwork that we then shared with the group. And it, it was just a really, um, yeah, really, really profound evening, actually, of um, encountering God. Well, it's just great to hear those really creative things from some of those different groups. And one of the encouragements that I think we want to bring, of course, is that you don't have to have a worship leader in your community in order to be able to engage in some really creative and powerful worship. Now, Helen, you've got a story just from this week from community about worshiping, just using YouTube. Why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're so thankful for technology at the moment, aren't we? But sometimes it can feel um, a little bit strained and we're unsure about how we can relate to one another in the way that we normally might like to. Um, but actually, this week, our community, um, we met for our usual Tuesday evening uh, meeting and one of the couples uh, led us in a time of worship uh, just by sharing a psalm and then um, sharing a YouTube song uh, on our Zoom call with, with one another. And we were just able to, to listen to that song, to sing along with it. Um, and I actually personally um, had a really significant encounter with the Holy Spirit um, during that time, which slightly surprised me um, because I perhaps wasn't expecting that to be the context where um, I'd feel like I could really meet with God closely. Um, but it just goes to show that um, it's worth us pressing in in this time. It's worth us um, trying together to find creative ways that we can still worship and enter his presence together. Well, that is awesome. And we want to hear more stories like that. So if you've got testimonies, share them with us. But for now, we're going to move into hearing some stories from our communities about that inward dimension, that family dimension of our community. So here's some stories. We're certainly living in unprecedented times and we're all looking to adapt and do things differently. And as a community, we've had to do that as well. But it's even more important, I feel, um, at this time that we need to feel supported and be supporting others. Like many communities, we have started to use Zoom and WhatsApp groups to keep in touch. And I know at the start, many people found that quite daunting um, using the technology. Um, but my encouragement to you would be not to let that put you off. Um, because there's plenty of people around to help you do uh, and set up. One of the real benefits of being involved in a community is knowing that there's a group of people who are looking out for you uh, and will help you in practical ways. So as a community in this time, we have looked to collect prescriptions for those people who are uh, unable to go and collect them themselves and who are shielding. Uh, we've done the shopping for those people who've had to self-isolate. And in lots of practical ways, we can offer support. It was really encouraging to see Faith rise as we chatted with the students. And um, it's 
it would be really great to uh, build further relationships mm-hmm. and have that cross community connection with uh, both the uh, communities and that's something we feel really passionate about mm. we've found this time as strange as you have <laughs> i'm sure this has been a challenging time for you and for us as a, a community it has it has presented lots of challenges um i think the most obvious one for us has been not being able to meet together in the same space a big part of acts 4 has always been meeting together around the dinner table and enjoying community meals and that hasn't been possible obviously so we've we've really had to rethink how we do community and what community looks like in this new in this new moment that we're living through um we've we've managed to i think get into quite a good rhythm um of of meeting once a week on zoom to um to share um stories to um pray for one another to read scripture and those have just been really blessed times i really look forward to thursday evenings you know 7:30 gathering um maybe some technical difficulties at the start you know getting people connected in but then actually having that opportunity just to share and um acknowledge that this is a really tough time and and to share kind of the the difficult things that we're going through and as a community to to sort of carry those things and offer prayer for those things um we've we've seen a huge amount of answered prayer in the last month especially in the area of employment and um I think that's really exciting that God is God is moving. God is um God is listening <laughs> and responding to our prayers and it's been it's been wonderful to hear those those stories of of answered prayer. Well, more great stories there of family really being built and I, I can tell you as well that our friends in Belper who started four new communities in the last few weeks uh, during this season which is amazing. I've seen some great things happen as well. There's quiz nights happening, which is engaging people both in the family and beyond, in the streets, lots happening. Uh, and actually, uh, they, they're gathering either as family over Zoom for breakfast and then engaging with the broadcast together, or perhaps uh, having the broadcast together and then but staying on Zoom together for lunch and that kind of thing. So lots of creativity there from an in perspective in Belper. Uh, and we've got a story as well, haven't we, Helen? Because uh, I alluded to it before that we're actually in the same community. It was literally just starting before lockdown. There were six adults, three families. Uh, and then as lockdowns happened, tell us what's happened since then. Yeah, well, um, it, yeah, it's been amazing. Um, we've, as you say, gone from uh, just six adults, uh, three families together, um, just back seven, eight weeks ago. And um, within the first sort of two, three weeks of lockdown, um, we grew to, I think it's 21 adults now um, as part of our uh, community group. So it's just been a really um, incredible time to be able to connect with others and be able to create that sense of family together. Um, we've had to be creative about how we do that, um, especially as uh, some of us didn't know each other that well um, before this time. but. Um, I've just been amazed at how um, quickly it's felt like we have gelled together in those friendships and in that sense of family together. And I'm really excited about um, what could happen with our community um, as we go forward, um, both in the lockdown time and as we come out of that. Um, It's a really exciting time to see what God's doing amongst us. Yeah, absolutely. And the point of that, of course, everyone, is that you're welcome to join a community if you're not part of one. There's a welcome available to you. And I I don't want you to feel like you can't or to be concerned about that in any way. So we do have some important principles in play. Uh, One of them is this. Anyone can join any community and the door is open. Okay, there's no closed doors. You don't need to fear rejection. You can go and visit some communities. But at the same time, the second principle is this. Nobody owns you. So the community that you might be part of doesn't own you for the rest of your life. And it's possible to move on into something new at some some point in time as well. So if you're just wondering about whether this really is for you or whether to push in or you've been a bit nervous about it, let me encourage you. We want to help you find a place of belonging in this season. Excellent. Well, we've talked about the up and the in, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the outward dimension, the missional, the evangelistic dimension of our community. So here's a few more stories from our community leaders. Another highlight of our community since the lockdown is that we've been able to invite other people into the conversation. 
So we invited Eve and Joe, um, who are gracious enough to want to share a bit about how they've been sharing the gospel um, and their experiences of that. And they wanted to encourage the students in that. So yeah, they came the other week um, to encourage our students and us, and they can tell you more about it. Just before lockdown occurred, the Acts 4 community were going to meet with the student group to um, discuss evangelism. Mm. However, things got in the way. So instead, me and Eve hopped onto a Zoom call last week and uh, we were able to share creative ways in which we can share the gospel. Yeah, we had some really insightful discussions around um, our sphere of influence, what we feel evangelism um looks like to us, um, the strengths and weaknesses of sharing and some of the things that might hinder us from sharing the gospel. Um, And we studied the passage Matthew 22 that talks about the banquet wedding feast. Um, And we really just felt the Lord had given us a word about the joy of salvation and how it is um, one of the keys to mobilizing evangelism that when we can really grab hold um, of the reality of the joy it is to be saved that then sending out invitations to the people around us um, just becomes really natural and really fun. So our community is built on the passage in Acts 4 that talks about all the believers coming together in one heart and mind and serving one another so that no one's needs were left behind. As a community we've been praying for a great awareness of the Holy Spirit during this time um one way that the holy spirit has been speaking to us personally is by giving us names of people and uh, ways in which we can bless them mm. uh, some of the ways that we've been uh, doing this is uh, by picking flowers uh, going shopping for people and um, baking pancakes as well um and just different ways that we can meet their needs yeah so one of the interactions that really stood out to us is when we went to take a really fun creative care package to one of the ladies in our community and she was so overjoyed that she came to the door with three other names of women that also really need the stuff during this time and we just felt really impacted by that it's a really beautiful picture of how the kingdom is expanding during this time we found this time really uh, fruitful and um, if you haven't already done so, then we'd like to really encourage you to uh, tune into the Holy Spirit and because um, often we can be the answer to somebody's prayer. Yeah. Feeling connected at this time is really important, not only for people in the church, but also for our friends and families and neighbours that we come into contact with. And as a group, we've looked to help people feel that sense of belonging. Uh, one of the young and people in our group actually went round her street with the Victory in Europe um, schedule on Friday uh, and encouraged people to come out for coffee and cake on their street, uh, which had never been done before. Um, and loads of people turned up, which was absolutely great. Um, we've also um, looked, as, as Michael said last week in the sermon, about offering hospitality and hospitality being to uh, welcoming strangers. Um, And as a group, we have welcomed someone in who we didn't know before COVID-19 and helped them find a place of care and belonging. Well, isn't it great just to hear more of these stories about life going beyond the walls of the church. It's wonderful to be able to love our neighbours in this season as Jesus calls us to. And again, it's something that we've been uh, expressing and looking to do as a community, our new community. Uh, we set up WhatsApp groups in a few of our different streets just to try and reach out to bless our neighbours and to help them to bless one another. And community started, lots of parties have been happening around the day and that kind of thing. And it's been amazing how many people just want to connect at this time. They want to build relationships, they want to get to know each other, and they just need an invitation. So. We can do this, guys. It's a real opportunity to bless people. Okay, so we've had quite a few stories up, in and out. There's lots of encouragement. There's a strong invitation to you. Helen, is there anything you just want to say to help people if they want to just step a bit further in at this point in time? Yeah, so just to say, if you've um, heard some of the things that we've been talking about and you're um, still thinking about how do I really take the next step to get connected to a community. Well, first I want to speak to those of you who are in communities already and just say, I know that many of you know others who are part of our wider church family uh, and invite them into your community. Tell them about what you're up to. And we want to invite everybody um, to find a place. And sometimes that that needs a personal invitation, doesn't it? Um, But if you're someone who's not in a community yet and you want to find out a bit more, 
Um, think about if there are others who you know who are part of something, find out from them what it is that they're doing, see if they know about other communities that might um, be in your local area or have a particular interest um, that will connect well with you. Uh, and failing that, you can get in touch with me directly and I'd love to um, chat with you and figure out where um, a place of a real belonging as part of the church in a community um, could be for you. So you can do that just simply by emailing me at helen at reachonline.org. Excellent. Well, just to repeat that, you can be in contact with Helen, helen at reachonline.org. Uh, we'd love to hear from you if you want to push in more. We want to bless you. Just delighted that everyone wants to be part of Reach. You really don't need to feel any pressure, but there is an invitation into this closer walk of discipleship. So that brings our time to, a, to an end now. So thanks for being with us. Thanks for listening. And may God bless you in the coming weeks as you explore community life. Wow, thank you so much, everyone, for that. That was really, really good. It's just great to hear stories about what's going on in your communities online and the really interesting ideas that you've had. I'm sure it's inspired lots of ideas for other people as well, not just me. Um, if you would like to find out more about joining a rich community, if you're not already involved, then please do email us at communities at reachonline.org or you can contact Helen directly at helen at reachonline.org. And just one final reminder, if you just want to get in touch with us about anything, you can always email us at hello at reachonline.org. We hope you've enjoyed this morning and we wish you a blessed week. Take care. Bye. Bye.